In this lecture, we take a look at reputational crises by examining two broad kinds of these and exploring their implications for communication. As we conclude our exploration of crisis types, we examine reputational ones. Sohn and Laracy in 2014 distinguish between other types of crises and reputational crises. They argue that just because a crisis may affect an organization's reputation, it doesn't necessarily mean that the crisis is reputational. Instead, they argue that reputational crises are events that threaten the collective perceptions and estimates of an organization's quality held by its stakeholders, without necessarily a direct material problem to solve. They identify three conditions that have to be met for a crisis to be considered a reputational crisis. First, reputational crises are different from reputational problems because there are specific events that trigger the crisis and its coverage. Second, the threat has to be credible enough to distinguish it from merely a reputational problem. Quite frankly, organizations can have bad reputations and not be in crisis. Finally, by emphasizing the word collective, it suggests that whatever the reputational crisis is, it affects a more global evaluation of the worth, appropriateness, or value of the organization in the eyes of the stakeholder. This also suggests that reputational crises may not be universally viewed as crises. That is, they can be specific to different stakeholder groups. What one stakeholder group finds incredibly problematic, generating problems for the organization, other groups may not be bothered about at all. So let's take a look at two broad types of reputational crises, ones that meet these conditions and have been identified in the literature as examples of them. Rumors about organizations are nothing new. These can be internal rumors about downsizing, changes, and the like, or they can be viral rumors that emerge. Of course, rumors can be problems for organization, but as reputational crises, these can actually carry substantial risk to the organization. Anyone who's seen their parents or their grandparents' emails will have seen reports of death, destruction, and craziness. The thing is, though, in a social media atmosphere, rumors can be spread quite effectively, particularly if they get picked up by traditional news outlets. For example, in 2008, a viral rumor emerged that Steve Jobs had had a heart attack. This was picked up by CNN. Immediately, stocks in Apple dropped about 5%, and in the end, the company lost about 10% of its company's value before it was all cleaned up. Naturally, it rebounded, but that was just because of a very simple rumor. It was a fairly easy one to manage in the end, but it was investigated by the Securities and Exchange Commission to see whether it had emerged as a way for unscrupulous investors to profit. This turned out not to be the case, but this is a serious kind of risk for a lot of publicly traded organizations. Apple certainly isn't the only organization to have managed rumors, something that falls directly into the communications professional's job description. For example, Coca-Cola has a whole section on its website to push back against rumors that circulate about it ranging from using bug-based dyes to coke-causing Alzheimer's. Or this could include Procter & Gamble's repeated efforts to manage claims that it's a front for Satanists. They even won a $19.3 million settlement against Amway for spreading the rumor in 2007. One of the challenges for organizations is knowing when and how to respond to rumors that emerge. The other kind of major reputational crisis is the direct reputational attack. This can take many forms. Tim Coombs and Sherry Holliday were the first to call these paracrises because they recognized that organizations were facing an increasing number of crises, but these weren't necessarily organizational or industry changing problems like we've seen across the other three broad types of crisis. Rather, paracrises focus on particular complaints that gain some traction in online or traditional media outlets. They can be rumors, but more typically, they're examples of consumer complaints, counter-branding, and even consumer advocacy. In a social media environment, organizations are increasingly getting used to managing complaints. In chatting with folks about the industry, the general sense is that for every positive piece of feedback about a company, they're likely to get at least 20 complaints. For the most part, these complaints don't escalate to crises, but when they do, they can create interesting challenges for organizations. 
i think one of the most interesting cases a few years back was bayer aspirin's little pains campaign that was released in the u s the campaign was cute the company's slogan at the time was for all of life's little pains and it was trying to target parents with back pain which is nothing new a lot of their previous campaigns had had the exact same target and it always used imagery of parents picking up kids and having back pain this campaign though focused on that and especially moms with a bit of double entendre tagline of for all of life's little pains this apparently didn't sit well with one mom's network in the u.s who sent a joint letter signed by about nine hundred women taking issue with the suggestion that their children were pains Bayer's immediate response was to send a personalized letter from the CEO to each and every one of the signatories and to pull the campaign. Now, these consumer advocates then used their same social media voice to praise Bayer for the action. It ended up being a win for the company, and it does suggest that potentially hostile stakeholders can be shifted to allies with the right kinds of messaging. Like the Bayer campaign demonstrates, this relationship between the issue and the stakeholders is ultimately what can escalate a reputational problem to a crisis with a bit of amplification of the issue. These are a category of crises that are really growing increasingly in a digital organizational environment. However, it's also a type of crisis that when managed well can end up being an opportunity for organizations to gain in reputation and trustworthiness even among stakeholders were, who weren't interested in or affected by the crisis. For follow-up and more information about reputational crises, these articles are a pretty good start.